Um, one of the, the basic problems, which I think is ignored, it's like sort of the elephant in the room problem about Orthodox Judaism, is that it's kind of low on the um, on uh, liberty. That is to say, it's like low on the idea of personal, um, personal, uh, economic, and uh, political freedoms. In fact, it doesn't believe in freedom at all. It doesn't even register on the Richter scale. So that's at least um, if you believe in freedom, if you believe that you should, you know, have some right to your own property, right to your own personal life, um, right to elect people. So then, you know, like Orthodox Judaism is basically, not basically, it's against these things. It's a different value system. I mean, um, the, um, uh, you know, there is this idea that a lot of people like me sort of grew up with that governments exist um, to protect uh, its citizens and to protect the natural rights of citizens. And as soon as they've stepped over that goal to, um, to exceed that legitimate power, so then they lose the entire legitimacy. Um, that, I, that idea is completely absent in Torah and um, in an Orthodox Judaism completely. So if, like, um, if that value means anything to anybody, then um, it's sort of hard to understand how, like, that there can't be some type of, you know, I mean, um, idea that maybe we should, like, um, you know, combine, like, the Talmud along with, you know, something else to sort of put a little bit of balance in the whole thing. I don't know what else you do with that. The Republic of Plato, maybe, you know, not that there's freedom there, but maybe Aristotle, like Rambam, wanted to do, you know, this is the, this is the idea of the Middle Ages, to put reason in as a balancing principle to Tehram. But nowadays you don't have that reason sort of on the wane, and even in the secular world, uh, ever since the, the basically from the middle of the 60s and onward, like, uh, there's been this attack on science and reason. Okay, well that's one problem. And the other, the other problem is involuntary servitude that bothers me to some degree. The people, in other words, it's in the old days you could be for, you know, the idea in the United States Constitution, you can't force others to work for you. Um, involuntary servitude. The government can't do that, or people can't. You can't have involuntary servitude in the Constitution. But I'm just wondering, isn't that like what COLO is today? I mean, people sitting, they extract, you know, they force the government to, to give them money. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, um, and it sounds like it's wanted to be done. Like in the old days, people wanted, they would have a bait midrash in the city, and people would want to support that. Or even when yeshivas were made, would people, you know, would voluntarily do it. But there's a difference between giving money to yeshiva on a voluntary basis and being forced to do it. Um, the idea of people being forced to give you money is, or by extortion um, seems to me to be sort of like in the call of Hamas in the Torah. Hamas is extortion. And it seems to me also to be kind of, kind of problematic. If you can get away with it legally, it doesn't mean that it's morally right to do. It's involuntary servitude, forcing others to work for you. Um, so there's all of these different problems that um, I find with Orthodox Judaism just doesn't, um, in other words, in America, the idea of justice is absolutely clear um, what, it, what it means. It has a basis, equality, equality and freedom. This is people in the, in the government exist to preserve these rights. Of course, rights are abused very much, just like states' rights, like states rights was once abused by the, by the South. So the idea of rights is also abused, a right, um, a right to feel good, a right... Um, a right to a job, a right to um, the people have to do things for you. These are not like the types of rights that were envisioned by the Constitution. So it's abused very much. The whole concept gets to be ridiculous. Um, but um, but I do believe in human rights. And I do believe in freedom. And I think that um, anybody who believes in freedom or values their own personal freedom and doesn't want to have rabbis telling them what to do all the time, 24 hours a day, ought to sort of reconsider like what, what does it mean to be a Jew. Okay, well, thank you.